Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. Today is another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be a broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to Victor at VictorJM.com. That's Victor at VictorJM.com. Today's question comes from Roland, who says, I listen to your podcast daily. Thank you for sharing your insights and bringing together a depth of knowledgeable people to share their real estate insights. George Ross is my favorite. I'm writing to you because I'm in a predicament with a recent acquisition. I recently purchased a small number of run-down lakeside properties in a small Quebec community about an hour outside of Ottawa, with the intention of renovating and renting them out as short-term rentals. I was given what I thought to be a really good deal with seller financing. The properties had been sitting on the market for some time, and I befriended the seller. Before moving forward with the purchase, I did my research and due diligence with the city officials to determine that short-term rentals were indeed allowed. But recently, I was informed by city officials that they will not permit me to run a short-term rental after all, citing that their stance on short-term rentals had changed. So with that background, I was wondering what you would consider doing if you were in my situation. The properties are located on a sizable lake, an area with rich history of tourism, and specifically anglers coming from the United States. Despite the city's U-turn, I remain positive and bullish on the area and on the future property value. So I'm forced to make the space available either as a medium-term or a long-term rental. I'm hesitant to go long-term given the rental profile of the community. Then I thought you might have some perspective given your experience with medium-term rentals. What would you do if you found yourself in my situation? Well, Roland, this is a great question, and I'm sorry to hear about your troubles. Short-term rentals are an area that are full of this type of risk. I can go down a list of city after city that have surprised property owners with a change of policy. There's Ottawa, Toronto, Berlin, New York, Hamilton, Nashville. The list goes on and on. Unless a city specifically and explicitly makes their policy known, it's very difficult for property owners to put in a long-term plan. I'm a little unclear as to exactly what happened. Has the town changed the zoning on your property, or have they simply made a policy change on the permitted uses within that zone? There are a spectrum of choices that you do have. Now, first of all, let me be clear. I'm not a lawyer, and I can't be in the position of offering you legal advice. You'll need to seek legal advice from counsel who are competent and licensed in the area. And, of course, Quebec's legal system is based on French civil code as opposed to British common law, which is the basis for the rest of Canada. These are different, and they alter the powers that government has. You would think that if government arbitrarily changes the permitted use on a property, that is the equivalent of condemning a property without offering the owner just compensation. And in many jurisdictions, that would be grounds for a lawsuit. But in this case, I doubt you would have much of a case. I would suspect that under the current zoning, hotel use is not permitted. It sounds like the government had previously turned a blind eye to the use as a short-term rental and is now merely enforcing the zoning. I personally like it when a community makes it clear what the permitted uses are and uses the zoning code properly. For me, that's a prerequisite before I invest in a short-term rental in a given market. If the city did previously send you information in writing that short-term rentals were permitted, you might have a case to argue that they can't take it away from you, but it might be a weak case. I do agree that long-term rentals in that location would probably be problematic. The design of a property as a seasonal rental versus a year-round rental are vastly different. You've got a few choices. You could explore medium-term rentals, like you said, and there is definitely a category of guests that would rent a cottage for a month or more, but you're really restricting the size of your market. Moreover, it's unlikely to provide you with the revenue you need to carry the property year-round. I suspect the numbers will simply not make sense. Now, some people in some communities have explored the idea of using a high-quality trailer like an Airstream trailer as a short-term rental. And it's possible that these facilities, being temporary structures, might fall into a different use category, and they might be exempt from the short-term rental regulations. That's something to explore. I don't know, but it might be something to investigate. Another choice would be to market the properties as fractional ownership. You could fix up the cottages and divide each cottage into six shares or ten shares and sell each share at a significant premium compared to what one fraction should actually cost, but it would still be at a discount compared to what it would cost an owner to buy a cottage outright. You would then charge each owner a maintenance fee, which would be amortized over the entire portfolio of cottages. In order to make that attractive, the properties would need to be well finished and well amenitized. The buyer needs to experience that they're getting 
access to a property that's better than expected for a lower cost than expected. And if you can remove the maintenance headache, you would have a compelling business model. People generally don't stay at their cottage for more than a month out of the year anyway. So fractional ownership probably wouldn't be seen as a limitation. In fact, rather, it would be an asset. If your portfolio is too small, it might be difficult. But with a little bit of scale, it could be a very viable business model that would be fully compliant with the zoning. So those are a couple of ideas. Hopefully they're helpful. I want to thank you, Roland, for a great question. And for the listeners at home, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow.